After pausing in Fayetteville, Sherman continued to advance the two wings of his army to the northeast. The Confederate defenders did not know whether he was moving on Raleigh, the capital of North Carolina, or the important rail junction of Goldsboro. Now Sherman, Sherman's not looking for a fight. The last thing he wants to do is get engaged. He just simply does not carry enough ammunition to go around looking for a fight. His objective is Goldsboro here. Now this is great ground for Hardy because it's important to know that there's only one road in, which is the primary route that Sherman's left wing will be marching upon. To the left and to the right of me are two major terrain features. To my left is the Cape Fear River. To my right is the Black River. And through this one little area, it narrows to a point where it's only about two miles in width. This is the perfect area to lay a defense. Kilpatrick's cavalry, screening for Sherman's left wing, the 14th and 20th Army Corps under Slocum, made contact with Hardy's Confederates near the town of Aversboro on March 15. Hardy, along with Hampton and Wheeler's cavalrymen, had about 6,500 men deployed along the Raleigh Plank Road. Hardy was to delay Sherman's advance as Johnson concentrated his forces to the north at Smithfield. Hardy deployed his men in three defensive lines, with less experienced troops manning the first and second lines. The third and final line was the strongest with veteran troops. Hardy's plan called for the first line to resist the Union advance for as long as possible and then fall back to the second. The second line was to eventually fall back on the third, located where the roads split toward Raleigh and Goldsboro. On March 16th, after brief skirmishing between the first defensive line and Kilpatrick's cavalry and some infantry, a Union infantry brigade was sent around the Confederate right flank as more and more Federal troops arrived on the battlefield. So roughly around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, you have this Union line that's pressing, hard pressing, the Confederate first line here, and now a Union brigade of several Illinois regiments and one Ohio regiment, Henry Case's brigade, has moved around the right flank. Oh, by the way, the 20th Corps artillery has arrived, 12 artillery pieces, hub to hub, wheel to wheel, just to my immediate south here along that wood line there on that high ground. The Federal's flank attack included units armed with Spencer repeating rifles that helped route the heavily outnumbered first defensive line, which retreated to the second Confederate line. The second line had to eventually fall back as well as units of the Union Army's 14th Corps began to arrive. The Confederates' thin last line of defense was shorn up by the timely arrival of Wheeler's cavalry and a steep ravine on the right. Sherman decided to delay a final assault on the defenders until the next morning. On the morning of March 17th, Sherman's skirmishers advanced to find that the Confederates were gone from the third line. All that was left was the smoldering campfires from the night before. Now Sherman will continue to try to keep the ruse in regards to am I going to Raleigh or to Goldsboro. He orders Kilpatrick's cavalry division to continue north towards the village of Aversboro as well as Ward's infantry. But once they get, once the rest of the left wing will reach that fork in the road, it will turn off towards Goldsboro. After pushing back Hardy, the road to Goldsboro was now open for Sherman. However, in addition to suffering several hundred casualties, the battle used up some of the Federal Army's precious ammunition and transporting the wounded slowed the Union advance. We look at who won the Battle of Aversboro. Well, in the traditional, conventional wisdom, um, one would think the Union forces did because they were the last ones standing or occupied the actual battleground. It was Hard E that initiated withdrawal and gave up the battlefield. So from a tactical sense, yes, the Union forces did win. But understand it wasn't Hardy's intent to either defeat or destroy the, the Union army that he was confronting. In a way, Hardy won. He achieved his goals. This is really his first independent command, and he does quite well. He selects great ground for a defense in depth. He's able to delay Sherman's advance for at least one day. At the same time, he's able to allow his 
some of these green soldiers their first time to see the elephant in a true battle. So it does much to help improve the morale. But it also allows his army, his wagon trains, to gain time and distance to separate themselves from Sherman's cavalry and Sherman's infantry. In a foot race, they're going to lose every time. By halting here and delaying, it allows these wagons to successfully move towards the village of Elevation. 